I'll, I'll, I'll send them the link. Good there morning are... to you. Uh, it's me, Maria, from the Fox Living Newsroom here in Los Angeles. And yes, where are our friends? If you're just tuning in, hello, YouTubers. Come join us inside the Hangout. If you want to join us ever, just send me a message. Tag me, Maria Quaban, or Fox Love in Los Angeles, and we will invite you into our pre-Hangout on Air Hangout so we can get to know you a little bit. That way, you can meet our favorite celebrities. Like today, we're going to hang out with John O'Hurley. John, uh, best known as Jay Peterman on Seinfeld. Remember back in the day, he's uh, been on tons of TV shows and movies since then. Of course, um, he's on, I think, on the play, main stage, Chicago. And I don't know if that's here. Well, it has to be here in L.A. I guess he's just promoting it. And then don't, also... Don't forget also uh, 2001. And then the Nakar... Nakar Zadigan is here. Nakar is from the new show called Rake on Fox. I'll be right back. Our Tony McEwing is here too. So he's going to come say hello to you in just a second, Tony. That's a big assumption on your part. Yes, you will. Uh, Tony, who was the third person she mentioned? And good morning, all. I'm just here for a, a, a quick moment. I just wanted to. What do you mean you're just Good morning, Kim. What is that all about? I'm just here Joe. for a moment. I, 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 got, I got business stuff that I need to get done. Um, oh, no, he didn't make a face. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's see. Don't make me put you in time out. Uh, John O'Hurley was the first person. John O'Hurley was the first person. Who is who is who is Zadigan? Who is that? Does she anyone know who that is? is on? Uh, darn. Seems let's like see, I just, I'll and see if I, I I can't understand Maria's. Oh, she's an Iranian-American actress? And the, she's in the uh, show Rake. Rake. Yeah. Uh, Rake. Rake. Yeah. Rake. Hey, Josh. Rake. Rake. Who's the third person? Uh-oh. Good morning. Good morning, morning, Josh. The third morning, person Josh. is... Josh, uh, this is the bird. You know what? Go easy on Tony. He's having a rough day. <laughs> we'll give you an easy time, Tony. Let me... Let me put it this way. If he's not having a rough day, then I haven't been trying hard enough. <laughs> yeah, probably by uh, 9 o'clock, um, he'll probably uh, be happy because Eloy will show up in a moment and have a little uh, uh, conversation with him. Scarlet, Scarlet, Leon, or Leon? Oh, I hadn't heard about that one. Uh, that's, that, that's, the, that's the name I see. Is that, did, she mention, did she mention that, Kim? Mm. Yeah, she mentioned Scarlet, Leon. That's the one I didn't catch. Okay, yeah, from uh, from the Foster, from the Fosters, is that it? In twenty four. Oh, okay, Fosters. That's the uh, show that Jennifer Lopez produces. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah, that's yeah. Oh, uh, I wish I could hang around, but I, I'm, I'm like, I'll come in for about ten minutes, and then I'll say I'll have to go. Um. Oh, there's Kempton because I got I got so much stuff on my desk. It's not funny. Hey, Kempton. Hello, good morning, Hector. Tony, Kim. Joe, where Next, have you been? John. Where have you been? Joe. I, I'm Noah. I'm Noah's Ark right now. We've been having 40 days of rain here in Hawaii. <laughs> oh. Oh, oh, see, I never know where you are. That's the, that's the problem. But you're coming back to uh, Las Vegas, right, for the Super Bowl, right? No, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to actually I'm gonna stay here now. My wife's going to fly in uh, Saturday, or Sunday morning. Oh, so I'm gonna stay here. So you have to mend the ark in case it flow away. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we've been having some heavy rain here. It's crazy. Mm. Well, you should where, so where are you? I'm in Maui right now. Oh darn! It's bad. Hello, Hello Diana. Diana. Hi. You know, even Good morning, with all, Diana. Hi, Diana. Even with all that rain in Maui, you know, I think a lot of people in. In the on the mainland would still would still rather be there than than where they are right now. Man, you're having such a hard time in Maui. Yeah. Isn't one of the volcanoes acting up too, like doing things that it doesn't usually do? No, oh, that's yeah. always, that's always been erupting on the Big Island. So, uh, Joe, anytime you need a house sitter, uh, <laughs> and you can't, no, just anytime you need a house sitter, just you know. Uh, make sure you send me a private message. <laughs> yeah, I will. Just in case you can't find someone on the island. Good, good <laughs> sure. Whether you can find someone on the island or not, 
I need a house sit for Joe. That's all I'm saying. Joe, yeah. Joe you really, you really don't look very happy. <laughs> the ring uh, will you get? Six thirty. I'm trying to. Wait. Is is the rain depressing for you? Is that the is that the problem? I'm waking up. I got a busy day today. <laughs> oh hi, Heidi. My videos. Hey Heidi. Well, there's something going on with your video. It's like your smi your smile is like is like delayed. Hey, mate. Like Hello. <laughs> uh, okay, so you guys have two women in here. I'm gonna go. Um, and uh -oh, right. look. Do not you, pick on them. All right, we will. We will. You're the only day, Kim. We, you're the only day. woman we pick on. Only you. I know. I know. I'm like, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm waiting for y'all to pick on the other females, and I'm going. Uh, no, no, no. We're not done with you. I'm done. I'm out. <laughs> Good morning, Trev. Did I speak to everybody? Good morning, I, Nick. I don't even know. Is hey, Trev, Trev even here? I see a picture. Yeah, Trev yeah, is here. Yeah, he's here. Okay, Maria, I'm leaving you with two women. When, when, when it comes to Trev, the question really is, is he ever really all here? <laughs> of course. Well, I don't, I don't know. Your voice. Talk to me, Trev. I haven't heard you. So, see, I, I spread I the can. love, Kim. It's not just you, Kim. I spread the love. I, I <laughs> we're only seeing their pictures? Yeah, we're not seeing anybody. We're not seeing anybody oh. right now. I said... Oh, Tony broke it. <laughs> uh, your... I broke it. Why? Why? <laughs> he did. Uh, as soon as she sat there, we started having bandwidth problems. <laughs> yeah, I said, check, check your bandwidth. You need to lower your bandwidth. It is pretty low. Why do, right why do they want to blame me for it? Because it always happens with you, Tony. No, I mean, it's yeah. Tony, did you adjust the no, monitor? No, I didn't do Why anything. Did it it takes more bandwidth to transmit his head. Oh. oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Good one. Really, Nick? See, really? Maria is so much more sensitive to the camera. We love you, Tony. Tony, you are not. They always you. think that Tony is cursed. Okay, I'm, I'm out of here, guys. Y'all have no, fun. No, why? Why are you leaving? All right, Kim. Well, actually, I was just going to only stay 10 minutes. i got to go get some business stuff done. I'm, I'm kind I'm of going, I, I, I'm going right over here where I always sit. Okay, well, we have a full house today. I'm so excited. Look at Kim. Woo! We've got yeah. um, Heidi and is that Diana is back. Yay. And Hector, who's this? Joe is he's here with his Aloha shirt. Joe's on Maui. Trev, I love it. And John, we are going to... Oh, my gosh. Look at... Okay. Hey, Maria, don't you think it would be a great idea yep, if Sandra and allowed us to do, um, to do house sitting for him? Don't you think that would be a good idea, Maria? Um, I just wanted to quickly give you guys the burlesque boom live shot. Uh. Can we get them? That looks good. And, uh, can we get them? <laughs> no, did, uh, Sandra is on a live uh, remote right now, and I guess huh. this kind of, you know, we're the ones for the girls. Like, this is supposed to be a Valentine's Day thingy where women can get ready for uh, Valentine's Day so they can learn how to seduce their date. It's about what time. About, what about the guys? What are, what so it's what a year How dare you? How dare you? How dare you? How dare you? Wait, hand up. Three gone. Right? So, so basically, men are getting one tiny thing on Valentine's Day. Basically, <laughs> basically no, the no, day of Valentine's Day is called Valentine's Day, but what it really is is spend a load of money on Women Day. That's what, that's what it is. <laughs> right? It's got nothing to do with the men whatsoever. So one <laughs> thing here. For the men, and you're complaining. How, how dare you? Look at how Trev gets so mad. Show your significant <laughs> other. <laughs> so mad at them with materialism. Commercialization. Wow, look at her. Valentine's Day. Okay, that's what you get. Valentine's Day is spending all the money on the woman, and if you don't, you're screwed. That's that's, that's not it. true. Oh, but look, you're they're having a lap dance class. I mean, that's not funny. Lap dance class. You only gave me a dozen roses, not two dozen. Oh. Who said that, Joe? Who said yeah, that's that? <laughs> that? That's it. That's, that's why you did not say that. I think it's more, I think it's yeah. more that the, the sort of women compete with their friends. Like, my boyfriend got me this. 
oh, well, yours only got you that kind of thing. They you won't say what? that. I but... only subscribe to that way of thinking, and let's get this straight right now about mm. Valentine's Day. I think you should definitely treat your woman extra special if you are within a couple of years of dating. So if you're within two Valentine's Days, then you should definitely spend some extra money for some roses. And we're going to ask John or Hurley this question because <laughs> he's right here right now. So let's sit down and chit chat with him. Yay! Hi. Hi, Maria. Pleasure to meet you. Good morning to you. I don't know if you remember our morning anchor Tony McEwen is here. Nice to see you. I know you guys have um, crotch pads. And, uh, yes, yes. So this is our. I'm well. How are you? I'll just speak into the microphone. Speak into my microphone. Yeah, this is our little blue mic. It's a little sensitive, so I'm going to try not to. Oh, so am I. That's it. Right? Are we all sensitive? A little so extra this morning. A little, a little fragile. We have all of our friends here hanging out with us from all over the world. Oh my goodness. And um, I really like this. It's, it's very casual, very informal. It's kind of a behind the scenes look at what we do here. Mm -hmm. And so I want to quickly introduce you, you guys. Look who's sitting next to me. We've got John Hurley um, starting on in the new. Is it a play? Right. Chicago. Uh, the musical Chicago. The musical Chicago. Yeah. It's not new. We're 17 years old on Broadway. <laughs> Longest oh, running exactly. American. Uh, <laughs> Of course, you may recognize him on Seinfeld as Jay Peterman, amongst many other things uh, that you have done commercials and game shows and golf. game shows. Dancing, Dancing with the stars. With the stars. My yeah, goodness. first season. Yes. Like yes, all of that good yes. stuff. All that spandex. Um, is that right for the men too? Huh? Well, no, I wore. I'm 50 years old, and I wore most of the spandex. <laughs> <laughs> memory, memory yarn, but some really bad memories. <laughs> You're so funny. Now, at this point, you guys, don't forget. This is where, at the end of this news block on the set on our broadcast TV, um, Francis is going to take our shot here, and then we're going to invite everyone to come join us. So, just so you know, this is very multitasking world here on this desk. <laughs> so, quickly, I want to introduce you to John. This is Diana. Diana is hanging out with us right outside of Kansas City, I believe. Right, oh, Diana? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm um, in Kansas City, actually. You're in Kansas City. Hector is here in the Riverside area. Heidi morning, is Jen. just outside of Kansas City. Joe is in hey, Maui uh, this morning, I believe. Where, oh, where are you, God, Joe? You. Joe, why are you not popping up? That's so weird. Um, right. Joe, yes? Yes, Francis? Uh, I don't have time to show the camera, so we're looking at you. Okay. You're a handsome guest. Oh, my handsome guest. That would be yeah, Joe and Molly, so right? Be. <laughs> yeah. um, <laughs> anyway, so that's Joe. For some reason, Joe, you are not popping up. Well, that's Joe and his wife right there. Okay. And then we've got John, who's here in Riverside, Kempton, Calgary, Canada. Hi, John. Oh. Nick is in Dallas. And Trev is in Yorkshire in England. And then oh. there's us. Yes. Lovely. So, um, hello, YouTubers. Thanks for tuning in. Listen, if you've got a question, put it in the comments box, and I'll get it to John. Okay? John's here to talk about uh, the play Chicago, the musical. Mm-hmm. And who do you play in it? Billy. Well, there's only two two roles you can there's play. One is Amos, uh, uh, Mr. Cellophane, or uh, Billy Flynn, the uh, role that Richard Gere played in, uh, in the film. So you play the one that Richard Gere played I that do. role. I do. You know, uh, something I didn't know uh, reading through. And I had actually heard that you were in, was it Spamalot or another Broadway? Uh, Spamalot was, I played King Arthur for many, many years. I've done over a thousand shows of both Spamalot and, uh, and I didn't Chicago. Real, and I should have realized that you were a trained vocalist. Or I started off in opera, actually. <gasps> oh, and then right. uh, it's been a slow descending spiral. For <laughs> <laughs> and you, you taught yourself. Piano? I, I uh, yeah, I trained so, uh, myself on piano. You're, ama you're amazingly talented. That's well, crazy. I just I do things because nobody tells me I can't. So. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's really great. Um, okay, so this is where we get the pet projects. They're going to come to us really quick. I'm sorry for being so schizophrenic, but that, that that's this is my the world here. Yeah, this is the way it goes. You're I know you. Then. I know you have a question, Kempton. Yes, I am in more ways than one. Um, Kempton, you had a question. Go ahead. Sure. So, John, you have done so many things and so talented, opera, thousand shows, but that one thing that we all know you by, the J. Peter Monroe, how do you feel about being having that dominating your career and, and being mentioned? And I'll let you answer that question in just a second. John, yes! Look, look who's here. John and Hurley, we're hanging out with all of our friends from all over the world. Come join us, youtube.com slash myfoxla, okay? And we can chit-chat. Okay, Kempton, I know you had a question in Canada. Um, did you how do I feel? Yes, question? I did. How do I feel about? Uh, yeah, you know, yeah. <laughs> I tell you, I, I had an opportunity to be to be on the championship show on the championship season with the championship team. Uh, <laughs> I could have been on a million other sitcoms, and that would have disappeared into a cultural vacuum. 
but uh, I was lucky enough to be on that show for many, many seasons, and uh, I look back at that as uh, one of the great experiences of my life. So that if people, if people say, "Oh, you've been kind of pigeonholed into Jay Peterman," I say, "You know what? So what? At least I had a chance to gallop." Well, you really embraced that role, though, because you took you, it further. You're rocking it. <laughs> Yon well, I had it. I, I mean, they basically the let me. Company. They, they let me yeah. create the role, and then yes, the PS to the story is that yeah. uh, a year and a half after Seinfeld ended, I ended up buying the J. Peterman Company, and today I own it with the real J. Peterman, John isn't, Peterman. Isn't right, that's yeah. so cool. Yeah, I know. That's <laughs> Got a, a real company from a row. row. <laughs> if, you go, if you go to jpeterman.com, you'll see the catalog and the company and everything that we parodied on Seinfeld. Isn't these. Uh, uh, these kind of Hemingway style mm -hmm. adventure stories about an Oxford button down. <laughs> uh huh. No, I love that. I love it. Uh, okay, now who else had a question? Who did I miss besides Kempton? No? Okay, um, that, I'm sure Nick, I have to. I'll ask a question. Okay, yeah. go ahead. Sure. All right. <clears throat> Which song from the Chicago soundtrack is your favorite? You know, I you know the one I really like, and, and it's not for the musicality of it, just because I think it's one of the most brilliant things ever written in, a, in a Broadway history was the song they both reached for the gun, and it's the ventriloquist number if you remember it from the movie, um, where Billy Flynn has uh, Roxy on his lap and he's he's providing all of her answers. At that moment in time in the musical, I think it is just absolutely brilliant that they were able to conceive of something that fits in so perfectly. And, and uh, I, I, I look back on that as one of the great moments, certainly one of the great moments in the show. It brings the house down, but I just think it's so darn clever of Candor and Ebb to be able to put that in at the right moment in time. So where do, where can we see you in tri this uh, musical show? Uh, I opened uh, I opened last night uh, in Costa Mesa, just Costa. a little bit south of uh, L.A. here, uh, and I've been touring around the country. This is my I've been doing it since 2005. As oh, I wow. said, I've done over a thousand shows. I've been back and forth on Broadway about four times, uh, and then I take it out for uh, eight to ten uh, eight to ten uh, uh, cities a year. So oh. it's a, now, it's how, how do you keep it fresh? Because it's um, you know, every night or every performance. It is. I Can say, uh, I go before I go on stage, and it's not only just this particular show, but many shows, every show I do. Mm -hmm. I go on just before I say one prayer, and that is, God, let me be surprised. <laughs> and what I mean by that is, it it, it 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 helps me just focus and relax, so that I can mm -hmm. be affected by what's going on around me. What and has been the last surprise that you've gotten? Because you know, I'm sure it can range from a fellow cast member saying. Not quite the right line. Well, no, I, 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 I mean it in a much more positive way yeah. than that because when I say surprised, I want to be surprised by something so that I think of the role, I think of my response in a different way mm -hmm. and not the same way that I did it the night before. Mm -hmm. uh, so I go on with no real expectations and I know that everything around me will provide me enough information to react to because acting really is not. It, it, it's not proactive, it's reactive. Mm -hmm. I'm reacting to what's being presented to me, as we do in life. Mm -hmm. You're reacting to what uh, the information I'm giving you. And uh, and that's really what acting is all about. It's, it's learning how to react. So if you go on with the idea of just being surprised by something every night, now granted you know what your lines are, but every single night I will find something in the show in that two and a half hours that will I'll go, I've never thought of that before. Really? Uh, this, that's, this is from somebody who's done the show over a thousand, thousand times. times, so I would yeah. say the, the role of Billy Flynn is a thousand times more interesting than it was when I began it in 2005. That's fascinating. Yeah. John, can I ask another question if no one has a question? So, so John, given you have done so many live performances, can you talk about the, uh, the instance where something went really terribly wrong and how did you recover from it? And I think for, for anyone doing a live performance, oh, it I is. think they're oh, bound yeah. to yeah. run yeah. into that. Uh, uh, I remember in uh, the opening night of uh, Spamalot in Las Vegas at the Wynn Hotel, this was supposed to be their big extravaganza, mm -hmm. and there's one point in the show when the Lady of the Lake and all of her accompanying uh, court and ladies rise up to the center of the stage mystically. Um, and uh, this was opening night in Vegas, and all of a sudden the floor opens, the smoke appears, and they rise up, but they only rise up halfway. Oh, oh my God! No. <laughs> They're kind of cut off right about here, which removes a little bit of the pageantry of what uh, was supposed to happen. So you sit there for a minute, and for, it, it only takes about 10 or 15 seconds to realize um, this is not going to happen yeah. tonight. And uh, so it was just one of the moments where I, I turned to the audience and I said, this is one of those moments when a hole appears in the middle of the stage, and you so want to jump right into it. That's so funny. Oh. Just imagine that. So we have some questions, actually, um, from our YouTubers you are watching. Uh, this particular person, let's see, uh, 
Porcupine. That's a very cute name, by the way. What was it like to be a part of the Spamalot cast in St. Louis? In St. Louis. Well, actually, I just resurrected the uh, show at the Muni, which is uh, one of the great experiences in theater anywhere in the country. It's the largest outdoor theater uh, in the country. They have 11,000 seats, and rain or shine, mm -hmm. the show goes on. So it's uh, it, and uh, it's this huge, huge stage with a beautiful amphitheater of 11,000 people. So doing Spamalot, a show that is a little bit more contained in a normal theater, but doing it on a large stage like that was what, what a wonderful experience. And the reaction of 11,000 people to something that is as hilariously insane as Monty Python's Spamalot was such a treat this summer. We did it for we did it for a week. Um, Eric Idol from the uh, who created the show from the original Monty Python cast came out to see it. And we all just had a great time, and we're talking about having the reunion on Broadway already. Oh, fun! Uh, this one other person uh, wants to know what do you like about doing Chicago. Wayne well, Johnson, thank you for your question. Thanks, Wayne. Uh, I, you know, I, I, I think it's one of the five great musicals that were ever done in the history of uh, American musical theater. Uh, and that being said, it represents some of the best music uh, uh, that Kander and Epp ever wrote, the best choreography that I think Bob Fosse ever did. So it's just a joy to start on a stage at 8 o'clock at night and know something that that you know something the audience doesn't and that's that over the next two and a half hours you're going to take them on a journey and they're going to be standing on their feet screaming and cheering at the end of the night and it's such it's a little bit like knowing that you have a Christmas present and you give it to somebody and you know when they open it it's going to be what they were waiting for mm -hmm. and uh, so it's that kind of fun every night so it's it's a nice it's a nice uh, a kind of a nice attitude to go to work with every night. How nice. Um, uh, Wayne actually expands on his question about um, the, the series. Do you think you will return to a TV series and what type of show would you do? And I want to expand on that because Seinfeld, you know, do you, it is such a unique show, mm -hmm. Seinfeld. And I don't know if any other show could ever be as to that well, one level of the great things. Or, how, um, that was going to be my know. next it's question. A, it's yeah. a tough thing to. I, I don't know that a network would ever give um, the time to develop um, a, a show as Seinfeld was. I mean, they got most mm -hmm. of that first season to really, you know, kind of create that show. Networks mm -hmm. get very antsy now with the cost of uh, production. But um, I would say uh, at least Seinfeld spawned alternative thinking in comedy. Uh, you know, the the idea of a sitcom about nothing really mm -hmm. all of a sudden made people think about. Other ways to present the, com the you know the notion of everyday comedy, mm -hmm. and um, and from that has spawned a lot of interesting new series. I mean, I, you look at even Modern Family, and I think even mm -hmm. the thoughts of that are really very Seinfeldian. It's true. Um, so I don't know that it, I don't know that anything will ever have the success of Seinfeld because it's just you know the pie the pie has been divvied up into so many slices mm -hmm. right now that I don't know that any show can, can maintain that type of audience again. But uh, I, I, there are some really funny things out there, and and my plans are to return to television oh, certainly okay. if we can find a good uh, we can find a good sitcom. So you are so you're looking. I mean oh, you, yes, you I'm see always looking. all the time. Uh, but I have, I am but I also have uh, obligations to my other shows and the other things that I do around the country speaking. Mm -hmm. uh, I've got a couple of books out and uh, That's right. You're an author as well on top of I all of that. Brand new children's book out actually called The Perfect <gasps> Dog. How old is your oh, uh, author? My son is um, uh, seven years old, and oh. I wrote uh, the perfect dog for him. Uh, it's a Dr. Seuss style poem, and it was number one there. Uh, it's the hot uh, new children's book on Amazon. I have to get it. But it's a it's a it's a wonderful little Dr. Seuss style poem that I wrote to him in his response in response to his question: uh -huh. Is there a dog that is perfect? And and it ends with the time honored phrase: The dog that is perfect is the one next to you. Oh my gosh, I have got to get this dog. No, it's called The Perfect Dog, yes. I mean, this book, this dog, I have to get this dog too. Maria, um, Heidi has a question. Heidi has a question, and, question and I have a question too. Okay, then um, that's it. Heidi and then Kempton, you'll have the Kempton question. Heidi, go ahead. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you. What is the favorite role you have done throughout your career? Like, if you had to just pick one, what would you pick? Well, Ooh, that's a hard one. It actually, it's a very easy answer, and oh, it's going to really? be a very strange one because it wasn't signed. I mean, I love Jay Peterman, and I love that whole thing. But my favorite day of going to work was hosting a show that I did back in 2000, or 1999 through 2001. It was called To Tell the Truth. Mm -hmm. It was the most enjoyable environment that I've ever spent because uh, To Tell the Truth, of course, had that you know the the wonderful phrase, "Will the real so and so please stand up?" And it was about the uh, you know uh, a, a, a person with a real unusual story and two imposters, and you're trying to convince a celebrity panel of of uh, who is who. Um, 
it was just the greatest experience because I got to do a talk show that you played along with, and the four celebrity panelists were were some were all handpicked by me, and I had the most enjoyable time. I mean, I even had my buddy Brian Cranston, who's gone on to obviously do many other things, but Paul <laughs> yeah, Poundstone, Meshack Taylor, and just it was we would shoot t uh, ten shows on a weekend, and it was just one of the most enjoyable experiences I've ever had in my career. I I, I miss it dearly. I, I think the internet kind of killed the fascination of the show because you can find out all of this stuff mm -hmm. on uh, on the internet now more uh, more quickly than you can on television. I'll have to but look it a lot up of fun. to tell the truth. I have to look it up. Um, Kempton, you have the Kempton question. Go ahead. Sure. So, so John, um, can you talk about how did the business opportunity with uh, Jay Peterman come up for you, and how much involvement do you have with the company? Like, do you help? set directions or day to day or you just take money from <laughs> them? Do I just take money? Well, the, yeah. uh, <laughs> the, uh, just a, a bit of a backtrack there, during the run of Seinfeld 94 through uh, two, uh, 1999, uh, the company went from uh, 15 million in sales up to about 75 million in sales, wow. so they ramped up very quickly. But in that late period of uh, the 90s, there was uh, a, a lot of uh, overbuilding uh, with the moving towards IPO status. and. Uh, um, it didn't happen for them, and and a lot of they got got into a lot of financial difficulties by overextending. Um, they uh, they lost their intellectual property, and uh, so John Peterman called me and said, uh, "I've got I can get it all back. Do you want to put the company back together again uh, under our parallel strengths?" And so I said, "Absolutely." So since '99, I've had the company with them. I'm on the board of directors. Uh, I'm uh, um, inherently responsible for a lot of stuff that goes on there and uh, the growth of the company and we're doing extremely well and um, it's a joy to be with it. It's just a fun, fun, it's, it's I, I love that, that company and, and just the concept of the world as you wish it would be and all of the products that go along with it. It's a beautiful, very elegant catalog. And, um, Tom Hanks once said to me, it's the only catalog that I read cover to cover to my wife. And he says, <laughs> and, he says and I use your voice. <laughs> well, uh, John, thank you so much for sitting down with us. Um, Not a lot of fun. I just uh, thank you. Thank Thanks you all for being uh, on this today. It's a fun if, idea. If you guys um, are streaming, you can catch John's interview on the set coming up here with uh, Steve. I don't stream all that. No? You don't stream Never yet? did. Never did. I'm going to skip. Oh, it's very well. personal, you know, <laughs> how you stream. <laughs> it's a very personal thing. Now, uh, let's take a quick photo. Someone uh, jumped the gun there earlier, but let's take a quick photo. Uh, here's our camera right up here, John, and we'll take a photo. One, there's a bit of a delay. Okay, one, two, three, cheese. <laughs> Yay. Yay. And if you're in town, if you're here in Orange County, uh, Chicago is playing in Costa Mesa. Uh, we'll be there all week. So, yeah. so look up uh, the different shows. <laughs> the Have them sign your calendar too, Maria. Oh, calendar, calendar. <laughs> yeah. Maria, have yes. John, have you asked John. Yes. Oh, yeah, John we need to John calendar. sign the calendar. This is the calendar that I'm collecting names. Um, yeah. Yeah. And take a pen. Mm -hmm. And speaking of the perfect dog, this is our pet's calendar. So oh, anywhere, anywhere is good. This is from the Humane Society. So <laughs> we'll do something fun and charitable with it at the end of the year. Cool. Thank you. Pleasure meeting you. Oh, look, a little message. I love it. Oh, <laughs> sweet. <laughs> Thank you. I know I have to do some repairs. Thanks again. <laughs> Bye, guys. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thanks for coming, John. We're going to be in Chicago. Chicago's for the south side. Oh, I wonder what it's like to do like Chicago <laughs> and oh, Chicago. He doesn't know how to do it. Interesting. I do it. Bye, Jai. It was nice to meet you. We'll see you next time. Poor Tony. You know, Tony has a great hair system. Um, anyway, good morning. Good morning. Please keep on here. He's right there. That's a song. So Maria, so Maria, with the calendar signature, you may want to just take a photo daily or something. Otherwise, I'm sure there's no way you can tell whose signature is who at the end of the year, let alone like a month. Uh, yeah. Again, who's going to put it together? Put what together? I'll do it. You scan it in, I'll put it together. You will? Okay. Yeah. 
Like it has to be a collage of all the pictures for the month, right? Of all our guests for each month. Yeah. And then what we could do is we create a calendar, and maybe we can um, maybe we can then we can do something charitable with it, right? Like all the video is there, right? Like all the video, and then you can do a screen yeah. capture, yeah. and then yeah. from that, because then, I've uh, actually I've actually been um, lax on the on the guest list of each day, mm -hmm. so haven't done that so that I could do cross reference, but. Uh, yeah, and over my the point of taking a picture every day is then you can actually timestamp like what what signature looks like. Ooh, I mean. Right. Yeah. Like right now, I I dare you to tell me five signatures like who they are. It's like, it's really you know what we forgot to ask? We forgot to ask John O'Hurley about his Valentine's Day coming up. Oh. He's been married a long time, so when you're married a long time, you don't tend to, you know, do the dating Valentine. Like I was saying before, Trev, um, unless you're, you've been dating a long time, then Valentine's Day, you know, you do have some expectations. You do. That's just how it is. Right, Joe? That is a no win. No win. Heather's back. No, that no, is very deep. Which is no way. I'm not going in. I'm not having that. It's, it's, it's because I'm arguing with the woman and buying. I love to get. I love to get Trev all riled up. He's turning red. He's turning red. So loud. Right, Maria. That's not what I was saying. I've got no problem. Is that Matt right there? Yes, that's Matt. Matt, how dare you walk by and not say hello? Um, Trev. Yes, go ahead and finish your voice. Hey, Matt. My problem. Yes. I don't. I don't mind like spending money on a woman. I like the, like I get married. The wedding. The wedding's got nothing to do with the woman. It's all for the woman. Men don't. Men don't give a crap about it. I don't. No problem. Fine. But when you said we should have something for the men or something, you know, when there was that burlesque thing going on, you said we should have something for the men to look at to to get. They, they do have something. For them. That's what all Valentine's Day is. You're a tiny little bit. I'll be right back. Joe, you need yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, I'll be yeah, right back. Yeah, yeah, man. Joe, go ahead. Okay, bye. I'm out of here, then. Go on, Joe. I'll be, what, what, uh... I'll be right back. Okay. Let's read about Valentine's Day. Boo, Valentine's Day. It's me. We, we got a lot of echo for some reason. Is it Joe, what's going on? What's going on? All right, Tony. 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 I'm not touching anything because you guys accused me of sabotaging the hangout. Accused? <laughs> <laughs> You said you I, don't, I never accuse you, Tony. Bro, who said that? Hector? I never did. I never did. I never did. You, you don't, but Nick Scholl, for sure. I know I heard it come out of his mouth. <laughs> uh, he said what? <laughs> <laughs> what did I say? That you <laughs> always, you you always, you always say to Tony, saying that you he accused, kills the hangouts. me, wrongly I might add, of sabotaging the hangout every chance I get. <laughs> no, I didn't say that. No, I didn't say that. <laughs> oh, then who did? <laughs> Yes, you took too long to deny it. You, of course you said it. How is everyone doing today? <laughs> good. Good. Where is no, Joe, the, the echo is coming from the, the echo is coming from the good. It's coming from the, the, the main hangout from the Fox camera. Good here. It's not you, yeah, Joe. It's, it's, be a, it's a, probably a delay. Two like seconds. It's delay. doing all kind it's doing all kinds of things right now and I'm not touching anything. And it's just <laughs> you see that? I'm not could be Google, here my hands. Could be my hands are here. They're not touching anything, and it's doing all sorts of crazy stuff. I think there is a conspiracy <laughs> against me by Google. That's my own personal opinion. Uh, definitely. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> Technology demons. Exactly. Who said that? I did. I did. You They're did, related to the demon that eats uh, socks in the dryer. You're exactly. You're precisely. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly it. <laughs> That's exactly it. Does that ever really happen to anyone else? I mean, does that happen? Do you put socks in in the dryer and they just really do disappear? Yes. That doesn't all happen to anyone else. Yes. Oh, all yeah. the time. How, what, what do you mean, Trev? You don't. You don't. That's never happened to you, Trev. No, no. I know. I said, oh yeah, yeah. I think that's like you said. There's a. There's a there's a sock demon, and it's, it's a very busy what boy. What is that about? How does that happen? You know, I'm assuming, I'm assuming logically that the, the socks just get stuck. 
with static electricity to some other article yeah. of clothing and yeah. you, don't, you, you don't know it. That's the, that's the only explanation I can come up with. But wouldn't you think at some point you'd find it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But you never do. I mean, they 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 they're never seen again. Once they're gone, they're gone. Yes, so black hole. Black hole. Yeah, yeah. Um. So uh, John O'Hurley, I didn't realize. Um. You know, he's been a, he's done a lot of stuff. He's been around a long time. In fact, I remember John O'Hurley when he um when he actually had um, I think his hair was brown. I I remember him that far back. Yeah. Before he was, you know, before he became Silver Top. Yeah. yeah. It looks great though. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, and besides, you want to say hello to our yeah. hang, to our hangout group. Good morning, Julie. Hey, Julie. Good morning, Julie. Julie. Hello. Morning. Always Hi, good there. to see you. There you are. Okay. Okay. Everyone, you wanted to talk to Hector. Yeah. Please. Everyone vouched for me. I've been looking for Hector for the last yes. two days. Yes. Right? Yes. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. I just wanted to thank Hector. He sent me a really sweet holiday card, and he's been reaching out pretty much every day on Twitter just to check how I've been recovering. And oh, yeah. Except for Tony totally ignoring me when I got back. It's so good. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you know what? Here's the thing. And that's what I missed about Julia as well. People would believe that, except they saw that. Oh, our picture, our picture yesterday. <laughs> Oh, where did the clap come from? That's Hector. Oh, that's, that's Hector. Hector. <laughs> <laughs> He's like a one-man show. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> wow. The Google Hangout got really fancy. It gets, it, it, you know, it has its own. Special effects. Yeah, and I do the sound effect of the applause that when Maria says, Happy Friday. Oh, my God. Is it a dance party? It used to, well, it used to be. You know, she used to have, we used to, I think we should resurrect it on our show. We used to have what Maria used to call Aloha Friday. And and then the, 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 director, dog. the director would play music, and then we would all, you know, just yeah. And then you know, I was like, we we had dance Fridays on on Good Day New York when I was there too. So when I got here, I was like, why don't we make Friday more? We festive? used to have and then, those. And someone goes, oh no no, the other channel KTLA does that. I'm like, oh no. You can't like copyright Friday happiness. Well, like, and here's the thing. <laughs> here's the thing. The other station got it from us originally. Were so we're bringing it. Full we, circle. See, that's the thing. You can't start something and then allow someone else to usurp it, and then you know. Right. You just can't, you know. And the reason you know this because you've been here the whole time. Because I've whole, because whole I've been here 127 <laughs> years. You've been around. No, I Exactly. I've I've been here forever in a day. Does anybody and Julie, like you're not the only, only one who got the Christmas, Christmas card. card. Everyone, everyone who I who sent it, I sent it, sent it to I've everyone. Sent it to everyone. Oh great! I was starting to feel special. Okay, now. really, Hector. <laughs> <laughs> Hector, 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 are you familiar? Are you familiar with the term "bus killer"? That's what you just did to do. Yeah. <laughs> That's like going out on a date and telling a girl, "Like you look really pretty." And I said the same thing to my last date last night. <laughs> no, 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 no. It, it's, it's more than, it's that. More than that. I said that to all the girls I dated, the last 20 girls that I dated. <laughs> oh, you know, and I got a nice note from Kempton, too. Kempton, how yeah. are you? Yeah. I'm good, I'm good. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I sent you to me. Spotting me. Yeah. I'll call, I'll yeah, call, I want to be Asian cousin. Yeah, my cousin in Canada. Well, yeah, and, and he's also, you're, you're of Korean descent and he's of Chinese descent. Oh. Yeah, no one can really tell, so it's all right. Oh, I can tell. <laughs> <laughs> I can tell. Yeah. 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 Y
Oh, thank you very much. It's, it's been an emotional roller coaster for sure. Did you guys see that um, interview that happened with the New York One reporter yes. and, and the congressman, and the congressman physically threatened right. him to throw, yeah, to, throw, read about about to throw him over the balcony and that he would break him in half like a little boy? Uh, by the way, that New York One reporter is loving this. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, he's yeah. I bet. That goes on the highlight reel. Really did forever. you see the fear in his eyes when that congressman came back up at him? Did you see that? Yeah. Oh, my God. He was he like. Could, he could press some serious charges. It's all on tape. Oh, yeah. You know, if he genuinely believed that he was threatening Well, his you life. could see the fear in his face. Yeah. Did you guys see that? I've read about it. So the video so the is video really bad. So I saw, should I actually saw check out the video. Scary. Oh, yeah. I'll be right back. Yeah, no. Yeah. Who hasn't seen it? Who hasn't? Who didn't see it? I have it. Have it. John, yeah, Captain. Captain. We can't. We can't pull it up, can we? See, I even forget about this. But here's a lesson learned: never walk in front of a camera, whether you think it's on or not. Never say anything when you when you're wearing a mic. When you're wearing a mic because it could be. See, I'm wearing one right now. See, right yeah. here, it could be hot. And in fact, I have said things, and the executive producer Josh has come right out of the booth and said, "What? What was that? Why did you? Why did you know? You, you just never know. Just never know. You just never know." I said, "No, Josh, that wasn't with reference to any. You know, so you know, I'm very careful about that because you just never know. It can be hot, or it can go out over the air." Because some, because someone in audio pushes the wrong button. Mm -hmm. Wow, wow, that would be yeah. easier to keep. keep well, you're in the newsroom, Tony. Keep your microphone on off mode to consume yeah. better. Well, exactly, and you know people could hear me threatening uh, Trev within an inch of his life, which I do daily. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Stop wearing the ones that kill you. So for millions. <laughs> <laughs> I just have to keep an eye because I don't want to miss the food segment at nine because I've been told that I can. Are you in? Are you in that segment, or you just want to go out there to eat? I'm not narrating. Because it would not be above you. I know you. I mean, you're sweet and I love you to death. But it would not be above you to insinuate yourself into a segment just so you could eat. The surgery has <laughs> not impacted the appetite whatsoever. No. <laughs> yeah, that's how you knew I was really down for the count because I think for like ten days I, I didn't want to eat a thing. Now, did you lose weight? How much weight did you lose? I must have. I don't know. I don't really weigh myself, but um, I the clothes fit a little different. Well, yeah, because if you didn't really eat like for ten days, you would lose weight. I ate Jello just because if I so try to nothing. take all the prescription meds on empty stomach, then I'd get like really sick. So. I would just eat Jello. I, you know, a friend of mine was really good. She brought me those fresh pressed uh, juices. Mm -hmm. um, that I could keep down. That one, like, actually tasted good to me. And then there was some almond date milk that saved my life. That, like, that would. Come. How does that taste? It, so, it tastes so good. Yeah. Yeah. I my stomach just yeah. enough to eat all the meds, and so, um, yeah, I lost weight from that. But then I think I gained it back because. I um, couldn't, I wasn't allowed to work out for five weeks, but I'm mm. still, like, the appetite was back, mm -hmm. but then now I wasn't. Moving. Are you working out now? Yeah. You are? Yeah. I went swimming yesterday. I'm going to start swimming once a week. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. That's good. That's, that's a good one. Yeah. Well, swimming is, is one of the best overall exercises anyway. Yeah. yeah. What, do you, what do you do for these mad guns? Yeah. 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 It's, like, it's like a rock to <laughs> <his> waist. <laughs> 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 um, no, you know, but that's good though. And how are you feeling? I feel really good. The only thing that I notice is the eyes working twice as hard because mm. I'm half blind. So now my brain. No, is that is that you? Is that something that happened as a result of the surgery, or is that or is that was that pre-surgery? Yeah. So what happened is when the tumor the tumor was the size of my fist. Um, so in your in, brain, in my left brain, and your left brain controls your right mm -hmm. field of vision, so the right half mm -hmm. of each eye. So when it becomes that large and it's been in there for that long, it becomes part of your vascular system. So when they took the tumor out, there were parts of that now that was supplying nutrients to other parts of my brain because it was all weaved in, in and out of Which there. means the surgery was very intricate. Yeah, very intricate, and the tumor is very fibrous. So they took it out, and apparently the 
heart that probably uh, provided some oxygen and blood to the pathway from my brain to my eyes was impacted. So that's why my right field of vision didn't come back. Now, will it? We don't know. <laughs> I, everyone I ask gives me different answers. The neurosurgeon surgeon, um, is, you know, thinks it might slightly come back. The neuro-ophthalmologist thinks this is it. Um, uh, my ex-boyfriend, who's a neurosurgeon, he thinks it will come back a lot because he said that he sees patients two years after you know, the surgery and there are parts of their brain that should have never regenerated and it comes back. Okay, I'm going to go with the X. Yeah, me too. Yeah. <laughs> I'm yeah, right. Yeah, right. But Julie, you don't want to go with the X. Oh, thank you. You know, I'm working up the confidence to ditch the glasses because I, I can see without them and the prompter font is big enough for me to see. It's just... Um, my brain and my eyes are still getting used to it. So yeah. once I kind of get up to speed take, with that, I can probably... Yeah, take it yeah, slow. Take it slow. Yeah. 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 No, yeah. No rush. But your but left eye is... She looks so good. Bad, bad. And Tony, you better have those kids' pictures of yourself right now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the kid! I got to remember to mail that to you. You, got, you, know you better send me a text. Um, I, God dang it. Okay, all right. If somebody got to say there's things, to let me to remind me or tweet me or do something to remind me. Don't worry. I'll tweet you, Tony. I'll tweet you, Tony. Okay. Like but like later, Hector, don't tweet me before I get home because I won't remember it. I'm jetting because I don't want to miss this food segment. Okay, okay. Tweet around. Right. 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 Good to see you back. Yeah. 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 When we're when talking, we're talking you hear yourself echoing. We have serious echo. Yeah, is there yeah, something it? running in the background or something? It's not me. It's not me. No, no, it's, it's Maria. It's from Maria. Thanks. Thanks, Trev. Let us know. Trev. Let's see if it works. Yeah, that's fine. Wow, well, yeah. everything's There's frozen. No for more me blaming right Tony now. for this. No more blaming it's, Tony. It was once I, Tony started moving, but things started, started to slow down. I think there's still an echo. Are you sure you're not running a YouTube uh, video clip on the background or something? Let me double check. Let me double check. Yeah. No. You're on a channel, you shouldn't be on there. Nothing? No, let me close these windows down just in case there's something yeah. rolling on just, that. Just in case. Are you shopping online again, Maria? <laughs> <laughs> Am I what? Shopping online. Stocking online. Shopping? Or shopping. Oh, shopping. 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 Like Maria, we, Maria, we've got four, four days of nonstop rain here. On uh, Maui? Yes, yes. They're gonna call me Noah. Did, build an ark. Those big waves. You guys have been getting some really big waves oh. too, huh? Yeah. Seriously, if it's raining like that, I don't think I would want to house it uh, for Joe. Yeah, it was, you know it was a nice offer. Yeah. But, you know. Listen, even a rainy day in Hawaii, I don't care. It's still yeah. a beautiful day. Joe, I mean, no, I, I always we went outside even when it was raining. Mm. It didn't matter. We don't have a choice. Cool. Huh? We don't have a choice. If we didn't go outside when it wasn't raining, the economy would fall. It just, you know, it rains probably 200 days a year. <laughs> well, you know, it's funny because here, here in LA, if it rains, um, most people don't do anything. Am I right? I think I'm right on that, right, Tony? When it what? rains, when it when it rains hard in LA. Like a lot of people won't go to premieres. They won't go to. Oh well, yeah. Um, I mean, you, it does stop the city heard, to you've degree. Heard, you've heard the expression "putting a damper on." That that literally happens in LA. In LA, the puts, rain, it, puts a damper on. Puts events. Well, first of all, people Various in LA, and I, and I think I can say this fairly confidently. And one prime example would be the person right here behind. <laughs> people in LA cannot drive in the rain. 
They just no, not off. here. Same here. Funny. Eloy, you missed the better one Talk earlier. <laughs> um, <laughs> you know what? Right now it's nine twenty-five. I think in the car Zadigan is in the car Zadigan. That's that's Zadigan. always my comeback. If I have nothing. <laughs> Oh, so oh what happened to Nekar? Is she, is she coming, I assume? <laughs> it's my fault. <laughs> I don't have anything. If I don't have anything else, I'll take my dad home. Cool. Have a good day. What? Take it out, Joe. Who is leaving? Yeah. I'm going to take my daughter to school. Oh, Nick is coming. Oh, no, right. Drive carefully. They're in the rain. Right. Be safe okay. over there in Hawaii. First of all, really quickly, look yeah. at Joe and his beautiful Aloha green shirt. Uh, Aloha shirt. <laughs> I, used to have a, I used to have a Hawaiian shirt too, Maria, in That's high school. Cool. That's like normal wear in Hawaii. This is a mono. That's beautiful. I That's like that. Unit. Who is that? Mono Hei Ali. Oh, nice. That's have you have nice. any of them? No, but I've heard. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'll send you one. I'll get you one. Nice. I love those fabrics. What is it? Extra small? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Size minus one. Size minus one. That's right. I'm a two. Okay. Thank okay, you. Mahalo. Mahalo, mahalo. 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 Aloha, mahalo. Mahalo. Um, anyway, it's Wednesday. This week is going by kind of slow for me, Tony. Well, I don't know what I can do about that, really. Um... I just want to give a special shout out to my friends Diana and Heidi. Tony, have you had a chance to talk to them? Uh, I did, yeah. Okay. I did actually yeah. with Diana and Heidi for just a bit. I just want to see the website here. It says Diana Morgan. It says keeping you in stitches. Keeping you in stitches. Yep. Website not is not great at the moment, so... Sorry. Sorry, still working on it. That's okay. In progress. Keeping you Those in technology demons. Oh, that's cool. That's right up my alley. I'm going to check it out. Heidi, do you have a um, website? I, can get a I do. Thank you. It's Save More, Spend Less with Heidi. Save More, Spend Less. Ooh, that's yes. Tony's totally alley. Yes. Yes. Uh huh. Well, we all love that. I actually went to the grocery store the other day and I brought seven coupons that I cut out from the Sunday paper and I saved five dollars. I was kind of Yay. proud of myself. I was proud of myself. Oh, Maria. I think it kind of, what, what coupons remind me of, or, or make me think of, uh, old dears queuing to get, get, do you know what I mean? And they've got like very few things and just loads of coupons and you're queuing waiting for ages. Anyway, well done, seven five dollars. No, five dollars. I wish seventy-five. Five dollars. No, no. Well, I'm saving five dollars. Oh, thank you. Yeah, yeah. I have heard stories, and I hear it's true how women like. Remember Michelle, Michelle Lee, that broadcaster. Yeah, yeah. Michelle Lee. Yeah. Mm -hmm. She said sometimes she'll go to the store and they'll give her money. Hmm. Which is hard to believe. Does she have a gun at the time. That's possible, but it's really oh, hard. It's oh, she's hardcore about it though. She's hardcore couponer. Like, she'll go to the store and buy stuff, and they'll give her money, like that. We found a b bunch of coupons at the end. Right. 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 After the coupon deduction. <laughs> like she gets, she, well, it's bucks. It's bucks back. You know how you get the bucks back? No. Yes. Like that kind of thing. Yeah. yeah. Um, I wish I could do that. Like that, it does take time and commitment, I'm doesn't not that it, Heidi? Hardcore. It, it yes, takes very much. I did it because of necessity, and yeah. so I didn't do like extreme couponing, but I know how it's done, so to speak. Uh huh. But yeah, you have to buy things you, you don't have. You have to buy things you don't need yet. Right, you you're shopping for what you're going to need. Going to need. But right. the amount of time, like you said, Heidi, you said it takes, it takes a lot of time to, to do that. Do it. Would it not be more financially viable to have that time to earn money rather than, do you know what I mean? Rather than saving just a little bit in the, in the spot. No, that's, that's a good point. Um, right. When I started, it was a way to save money. And so I had just lost my full-time job. Yes. And so blogging is my full-time job, so to speak. And right. because of the money I was saving, I saved over ten thousand dollars the first year I did it. Jesus Christ! If you, if you how much? How much? 
ten thousand dollars in the first year. Wow, that's wow, a lot wow. of money. Right, right. Um, and if you're, if you, I mean, Trav, if you are at home and you've got, you know, your three children, whatever, you have to, you have to look for ways to save money. I've been there. Like I was a stay-at-home mom for a little while, and you clip those coupons. You are thinking ahead. I never could do it though, like to the extent that some of these um, ladies and, and men too. I, I know a stay-at-home dad that that does do this, um, but it's it's a challenge. I don't know skill. It's a skill to to be able to do that, and um, I wish I could do it. But it's like a sport One now. Of the things I mean, really yeah. easily is by when the price is really low. Uh -huh. So if ketchup's less than 79 cents or whatever your stock cut price is, buy three bottles so you have a bottle for each month. And then you won't have to buy that again. Yeah. Until it's back on sale. Well, I do stuff like that. I mean, we were shower gel for a month. We're only about £2.50. So I bought about 25 of them, I think. Yeah, um, hold that. Hold on. Kind of thing, so I, I do do that, yeah. But. Hold that thought. Hold that thought. Somebody very beautiful just walked in. Uh -huh. Stop, oh, yeah. the Stop the presses. Stop the presses. Is she Armenian? What? Maria, she, she's very sharp. Is she the guest? She's the guest. Oh, the guest. Okay. Mm -hmm. Nice to meet you. Let me throw the link out. Please come to right here. Come on, have a seat. Okay, come in the side. Yes, yeah, this is very casual. This is so casual and informal. Honestly, it's not like um, it's not like all the other interviews. Okay, this is very behind the scenes. You know. I want to get to watch myself do this. Yes, this is why I like to do it because I like to watch myself every day. Um, no, <laughs> no, we get to hang out with all these fine people from all over the world. Oh, great! Nice. Here. See, I wasn't lying. The Capri here. She's so pretty. Um, we're hanging out with Nakar Zadigan, you guys. Right? You did. Zadigan. You're getting good. Zadigan, uh, from the the TV show called Rake, which airs right here on Fox. Um, I got a chance to actually be on the set a couple of times, and I'll explain in just oh, a did second. You? Cool. Yeah, but uh, really quickly, I know you don't have much time with us. This is Diana. She's hanging out with us in Kansas City. Hello, Hector Diana is Morgan. here in um, in the Empire. Hi, so in Kansas City. John is in Riverside. Hi. Captain is in Calgary, Canada. Hi, is in Dallas. Dallas. Good morning. And Trev is in the UK. He's in Yorkshire. Oh, well, I'll try and, not to uh, do an awful English accent, except for every chance I get. <laughs> <laughs> I try to practice myself, and that's why I like when Trev is in the Hangout. Um, and also, we have a bunch of YouTubers watching us. Hello, YouTubers. Hello, YouTubers. If you have a question, put it in the comments box, and uh, I'll get it to you. Chew that gum girl. Jim Jimenez, thank you for that. I just spit my gum out. Um, so anyway, I will get it to you. Uh, in the car here if you have a question. So, okay, let's talk about Rake. How fun. It looks fun. I've seen the trailers. We absolutely love Greg Kinnear. Yeah, Greg's great. He's um, you uh, play Scarlet, yes? I do. I play a character called Scarlet Leon. Uh -huh. And Scarlet is the top dog of DA's office. Uh -huh. um, so oh, there you are, right there. Oh, yes, there she is. You are not going to grab her from me right now, are you? Yes, oh, you we just started. started. We just started. You guys, you should stream it. MyFoxLA.com. Because they are going to take Matt. You're a bad stage manager right now. <laughs> Can we get the car back after this? <laughs> after Here's this Matt. Come here, Matt. This is fun. Um, hopefully, Nick will be able to join us, but I'm not sure, you guys. But there's Matt, our big bad Ooh. manager. Is take Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> just a quick little just in case. Hold on. Um, ready? Come Here's back one. to set when I'm One, two, three, two. Hey, you guys um, have a news reporter every week. Who did so you come and talk to? I, came, Where was I? I, I know I'm always by myself because I'm in this little news reporter uh, place. But I did episode five, I think, and nine. So maybe I, you'll huh. see me on the whole. Oh. Yeah. Let's get in the car to sign the calendar at least. Yeah, it's fun. Uh, it's just like, well, I'll try to come back. This was fun. I wanted to talk to. I know. We'll everybody see, in see if you can. Okay. If you, if yeah. You can. Thank you so much. Bye. Okay. Well, yeah, have fun out there. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Maria, you could have still got asked her to sign the uh, thing. The calendar. Oh, damn it. You can go after her. I'm sure she'll come running back. Yeah. <laughs> you think she'll come back? I think oh, so. I we can yes. ask. She seems very nice, so yeah, she can she very ask. Nice. She's yeah, very, it's very sweet. She's, yeah. um, she's Iranian-American. Mm -hmm. You can tell she's Iranian. Born in Germany. You can. You can tell. Yeah, definitely. Really? Yeah. I couldn't tell. 
really. Not if well, Jeff is the international lady. <laughs> He's an oh, international man of mystery. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, baby. Lisa, how are you? Why don't you ever come say hello to our friends anymore? Wow. Hey, because my, my mystery blessings. Running around. I know you're always so busy. Hi guys, how are you doing? Hi, Hello, Lisa. Lisa. Oh, yeah. Good morning, Lisa. Good morning. Good morning. Possibly morning. Maria's most beautiful day ever. Are you guys noticing? Like, I, I don't know. I mean, I she's just, very just, I, I, I made a comment to that effect only five minutes ago. Yeah. Ah, yeah. oh, thank you. I don't know. It's, it's the hair. No, I don't know. It's like it's parted. You. It's parted as like way, way too. I'm sorry left. to make it so vain and stuff like that, but everyone's everyone's saying it, so I just thought you guys. Mm -hmm. <laughs> most most but, beautiful day so far, I would go. With. So far. That right cannot now. be the most beautiful day because how about tomorrow, the day after? Yeah. You guys are so sweet. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. so how have you been? I've been. You know what? Really, Lisa's been on the set so much. Okay, go on. But no, I think that it's you know it's fun um, because we have one person down. Maria is out having <laughs> maternity some baby. maternity leave, and the baby is beyond beautiful. So we yeah. all are playing out there a little bit more and it's fun and then we're busy writing stuff and and we have other shows you know not just the one that's here then we have a show that airs like at noon that we also prepare for so it's just been fun. Lisa are you going to go to the Academy Awards? You know what I don't know yet because you know, know Julie's okay. here so she'll probably do I'm that. Here. I did the Golden Globes that was really fun. Um, it is Lisa gets the best interviews <laughs> on the red carpet because yeah. um, they love her. All I don't the know that they love it. They just they do. They do, you know love what, you. do you know what I did? I did a thing where um, for the Golden Globes, I thought I just want to do something different because they get asked the same thing over and over again. So I made a bunch of just random questions and I put them in a bucket and I, I and love so that, then by the way. they pulled out and the one that they all kept pulling out, which was just so funny, was like give me your signature dance move and to oh. see. Stars dance was really funny, and um, directors as well. But also, then one of the ones that got pulled out was, "What was the worst review that you ever remember?" And like everyone remembers, what everyone they're remembers doing. the bad thing. Oh, the bad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They remember like the the date and the time. Oh my god! And the, yeah. Oh so. my god, Lisa! Did anyone not want to do the dance? Like, was someone like really? No, I asked someone to give me your your craziest look, or like I forget something about the look, and she didn't want to do that. And so the one she pulled out instead was was to convince everyone I'm your favorite interviewer, and she did. Oh, so that's she goes, of course you're my favorite. You didn't make me do the crazy face. So oh, okay, well, it was just nice. a fun way to mix it up because mm -hmm. I. I'm sure they get so tired of it. I mean, I'm not I'm sure. I know they get so tired of the same question. The, the standard three questions. Uh, that yeah, and you have so little time. time. It's not like mm -hmm. you get like to develop any type not of like this. It's not like yeah. this. It's like they're they're coming by, and you're lucky if you get you know. A lot of times the public will be like yeah. one. One question is all you get, and so you try <laughs> and get in. So you do what you can. Yeah, it's, anyway. it's daunting the red carpet for me. Yeah. you do okay, an guys. amazing job. Okay, nice thank you for stopping by. Thanks for coming by. Cheers. Bye. See you. Love See you. you. Love you more. Lisa. <laughs> Lisa's the best. Um, she really is. She's fearless on the red carpet. I got scolded a couple times and I was on the red carpet. I was not like, yeah, I did. I got scolded because I. By the publicist? Yeah, by the publicist. The publicists are really mean. Some of them can be so mean. They're like mm -hmm. pit bulls. I remember Jennifer Aniston came down the red carpet and I'd asked her a question. And this is exactly what they say. They'll go, one, you get one question. And I guess didn't hear that. I asked a second one. What is that? <laughs> I asked, uh huh. I, I not only asked a second question, I dared to touch her. And that really got him to stop. Yes, I touched her because I, what I did was I said, oh, and my last question, and I grabbed her arm. Not hard. I just kind of, you know, like, yeah, you know, gently. Yeah. And he just looked at me and was like, that's no, you don't, you know, you don't do that. Really? Yeah. I was scared, actually. I, I got kind of scared. I go, oh, I'm so sorry. I'm the sorry. Thing is, Maria, that, that what you're talking about is um, it, it's, it's a sales tactic, and you can use it use it to chat people up or, 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 or just or sell them things. Because when, you, when you're chatting someone up, you're selling, right, basically. And that thing, they, they say that when, when, you're, um, when you're selling, it has to be comfortable, though. It, it, it cannot be uncomfortable. If it's uncomfortable, you ruin it. It has to be the, to the point, as soon as you can do it, where it's comfortable, just touch him where you can. And a touch on the arm, just a light touch on the arm. Just be talking, just, yeah. just like touch around. That, because you, you're breaking down, you're getting close, because people have their zone. That's right. the, the, like a, so, and then yeah. there's the, and then there's the touch. And when you start to touch each other, the, the level of trust goes up. So they may not even notice that you've touched them, but the subconscious will notice. And it, and it adds sort of a level of trust to the uh, to No, the I hear you. 
and yep. I didn't do and I didn't do it calculated like that at all. It was mm -hmm. a natural instinct to do it, but um, I can imagine why um, celebrities wouldn't want you to touch them. I get it, but I yeah because they're special. They because no, they because think they're special. No, because if you think about it, if every single person on the red carpet were to do it, then it would be right. It would be inappropriate. Yeah, they'd be too I, friendly. I don't yeah, not, so I Sorry. get it. But it was a natural instinct for me to do it, and I, I understand. But he didn't have to like bark at me. He did. He was. He was like, Dude, I told you just. I forget what he said. Something like, I told you just once. You did it, or something like, like. You so know? really, so as she, uh, as he Anderson walked like, away, the publicist like scolded you, like stopped. Yes, he did. He scolded me. Something like, you. I told you, you just had the one, and then he walked away, or something mm -hmm. like that. You know, like literally. I don't know who it was at the time, but. I mean, I don't know if, he, if he's still with her, but whomever it was, it was her handler, whomever it was. Um, right. So, so yeah, you should have done your happy dance. Ha ha, I got two. <laughs> oh, she, didn't, oh, she, didn't she didn't answer the second. You pulled her away. Oh, really? Oh, so <laughs> he just pulled her away and then move on? And yes. then scolded you? Yes. Uh-huh. He scolded me as she was But you know, sometimes it's not just the publicist. Actually, it's the star, I would say, because... Hey, who give the the publicists that kind of power, right? Look at Ricky Gervais. Ricky Gervais answer all the questions. Well, there's this unknown guy who's asking him, interviewing him, and he was putting like three minutes, five minutes talking to this unknown. And it's it's really the. the I've heard that the, the best one, one of the best people that, that did like red carpet, you know, yeah. stop and talk and all that is um, Tom Cruise. I've heard he's like a really really nice guy. Um, Yes. And I saw, I saw a video once as they were doing the red carpet, and there were a girl on the phone and Tom Cruise were there, and he, and he took the phone off her and started talking to her friend. Yeah. <laughs> I think he didn't give her the phone back. She goes, what's up, Tom Cruise? <laughs> people are screaming off. I've actually heard that about him as well. I've heard that he is very, very yeah. warm and mm -hmm. very open. You know, I mean, I get it. Like, Jennifer Aniston was stalked by many, many people. I mean, more so than Ricky Gervais ever was. But not so, reporters. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. That's a work situation, right? On red carpet it's with all about camera, context, a station. And guy, yeah, and that guy totally took it beyond um, necessary. You're doing like a job, it. right? So. But, it's, but the thing is with that, it's doing a job. Overboard. Yeah, but he went a little overboard. Yeah, you know. that's the thing. He is doing a job, but if he's if he's if he's being nasty, then he basically what you're seeing. If that's the publicist, you're basically seeing an extension of her. So if he's being nasty, yeah. then that's going to give her a bad exactly. reputation. She's probably not like that. You know what I mean? But it's it's because yeah. It's, yeah so you see this publicist, and it's Jennifer yeah. Anderson's publicist. So you're attaching this nasty feeling to her when she mm -hmm. probably did nothing wrong. Yeah, um, I hope so. I hope that is the case. She seems like a nice person. Yeah. So I hope. Hopefully, it is not a reflection on who she is. But I do remember that. We always remember the bad. <laughs> bad. Always. But that did y'all see the... Um, that was bad for me on the red carpet. Yeah? Did y'all see the interview with uh, Jennifer Lawrence out on the red carpet where uh, one of the reporters had given her a home end spoiler? Like, she said that she'd only seen season one and season two. Oh, oh she's, yeah. she's back. I think that car is back. Is she coming back? Yeah, she's oh, she's cool. Oh, so cool. cool. See? Awesome. Oh, hey. yeah, rocks. <laughs> and make sure that she signed a calendar, too. Oh, yeah. Let me put it right here. Yeah. Right here. Right here. Aww. We can quiz her on our names. Long time no see her. <laughs> they just said, I told them that you're coming back, and they said, Aw, that's cool, eh? Your quality. <laughs> Party. Party. Well, we, the party. The party. Just you know what the party is. It, it's here. Um, now that's so nice of you to come back. Oh, well, you. sure. We were going to be just a quick thing over there. Well, you were just talking about um, your character Scarlet on Ray. Yes. And uh, she's the assistant DA or the DA. She's the assistant DA. She's the DA. Mm -hmm. First of all, set the premise because for those of you who don't know, Ray um, is a new show that just aired on Thursdays. Did it just premiere last week? It did. It did, right? Nine it stars Greg Kinnear, whom we absolutely love. He's in a ton of movies, and I think it's his first TV show yeah, back uh, series is. for, for since Talk Soup, maybe. That's right. Uh, so, Nikar is uh, playing a different DA in the show. And, yes. um, and Greg also plays an attorney. He plays a defense attorney, and so um, we're a bunch of lawyers, but it's not really procedural. The story is really more character-driven and um, kind of revolves around... Uh, Greg and uh, his character Keegan Dean, who's a man loaded with vices, mm. who's 
kind of, you know, getting thrown a curveball mm -hmm. every three seconds. Well, I was just reading. He's like, he's a gambler. He's he drinks a lot. He's in love with a prostitute. Yes, he's a womanizer. <laughs> he's a womanizer. He's right. he's so right. my life story. Right. Right. Friends in England should know what it is. This is you. This is you, Trev. <laughs> Not just kidding. <laughs> I'm just kidding, Trev. A rake is kind of an old Elizabethan term oh. that refers to a man who is a womanizer. And a oh, womanizer. that's where the name rake comes from. I wondered yeah. what the rake uh, reference was. Yeah. Oh, I get it. I get it. Okay. But you know, he's got this big heart, and um, so while he gets, he finds himself in so much trouble. Still, his friends and people around him kind of can't help but to, you know, want to love him and mm. want to help him. And mm -hmm. I think he's wearing on everybody's patience. But I was trying to get somebody to explain the show to me. Like, is it funny? Is it is it a drama? Like, how do you describe the show? Is it this quirky? Well, it does um, kind of fall in between mm -hmm. comedy and drama, and you know, finding um, kind of the right you know place between it. But it's a, it's a, there's a term called dramedy. It's a dramedy. A it is a real word. Okay, a drama. <laughs> and um, so it is. You know, but it's like life. Like I think there's a there's a lot of funny, but it comes out of the seriousness mm -hmm. of it, and there's a lot of serious, but it comes out of the comedy. Mm -hmm. of it. Um, okay. But hilarity ensues just, you know, all the time. I just, I heard someone say, well, it's something you haven't seen before. So I think so. It's, um, and it was a good tease, so I, I, I definitely is. want to see more. Hey, you guys, if you have a question for Nikar, just let me know and I'll get to you. Kempton, go ahead. Yeah, Nikar, can you talk about your experience working at uh, 24? You worked on that series, I think the final season. Um, was it I enjoyable? Did. How was it like? I did. I saw your um, Canada. Flag Go back yeah. Canada. He's I'm, in Calgary. Yeah. I worked in Canada, you know. I was working in Canada last year. Oh, After I left 24, I went to another series in Canada. Nice country you guys have. It's beautiful up there. I like how you change your tone of speaking depending on what country we're talking about. Oh, yeah, Canada. Yeah, you switched it Did a little I? bit. Yeah, you're like, oh, Canada. I was in Canada. Uh, um, We'd love to have you. Working on 24 was wonderful. Working on 24 was wonderful. It was another Fox show. I'm happy to be back on Fox to do Rake. Um, it was great to work on 24. It was a wonderful show with a wonderful team, and um, you know, it was it was very different from what I'm doing now. Mm -hmm. The character was really, really different. Um, Dahlia Hassan was a wonderful woman who was very dutiful and noble. Um, all things which were different than Scarlett, who, while this character of Scarlett um, kind of plays the opposite to Keegan's character, and that Keegan's this boyish man, Scarlett is kind of the consummate grown-up. Mm -hmm. to his boyish man. But I think there's a person inside of her that's really jealous of the fact that he gets to be a kid. He gets kid. to have fun. He gets to have fun. Yeah. And, you know, she has so many, so many responsibilities. So in that way, it's really different from 24. But I loved working on 24. And I have fond memories of that show. Trev, do you have a question? Yeah, if you could, um, if you could pick a role that's already been played out of any film, um, what, what would you be? What, you know, what, what genre do you want to go into? Um, well, I mean, look, I think that's an obvious question. Alexis Carrington from Dynasty is probably <laughs> the character you I really wanted hair. to play. Yeah, you can have the hair and like make it really big. But, yeah, but I was like, what, five when that show was on? So I missed the boat on that one. But no, I mean, there's so many characters. I don't know. There's so many stories. I'm really, I really wanted the character that I'm playing now. I have this idea in my mind of a real woman, you know, because I've played a lot of character women, and I've played a lot of women that are very different than me, accented, and that's kind of why I became an actress, because I wanted to, you know, do stuff like that, but I really, after doing that, I really wanted to play a character that was a real woman, and I want somebody that is dealing with real life the way that I'm dealing with real life, and, and this story takes place in Los Angeles. Los Angeles is kind of another character in this story, it is. and I think that Rick makes Los Angeles seem even more sophisticated than it maybe really is. <laughs> I totally agree with you. When I see movies that, that really highlight Los Angeles, yeah. I always go, what? Oh yeah, that is here in our town. Yeah. Really, like I'm not familiar. I think you guys go into Chinatown. We do, yeah. And um, I never go there enough, and I'm right. always fascinated. You with, should get out there. I know. You I just stay on the west side, <laughs> and it's so boring. Um, so listen, as as an actress, what scares you the most? Like, is there a role that has come, you know, in front of you where you go? <gasps> I can't, I can't, I don't know if I can do that, or, um, Yeah, you know, they or, say you should only do roles if they scare you. They say ah, if, they, if so that's what you, you should, you should do take it, it on. Right. Um, I think 
everything that has ever come my way has That's frightened me at the beginning. Speaking of 24, you know, that was a character that, um, sure. as you know, was much older than me and had a grown daughter that was my own age in real life. So that was... That That's was, weird. Yeah, well, it was, it was challenging to think wow. that I pulled that off. And this character, um, Scarlet, because she's so real and so um, like me and like every woman, I was, of course, the challenge of that, you know, has has met me immediately like can I how you know it's so it's such a real thing and it's so to bring all the kind of real life things real life things of women and how do you place how do you play a woman who has a daughter that's uh, an older I mean that's basically mm -hmm. almost your your same age how did you very carefully yeah how did, you, <laughs> did you talk to other people who were uh, mothers obviously of, of, of someone of that age or no how do you research them? no I mean you know I never really thought about that aspect of it I mean in any in any every character that I play I try to really t imagine what their life is like mm -hmm. and um, there were so many you know, I think there's an aspect of of, of of being nurturing and of being loving and of living with someone and mm -hmm. just, you know, just in any other way. Like, I'm, a, I'm an attorney on this show, but yes. I clearly didn't go to law school. Don't tell anybody. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then really quickly, I have to, I have to let um, Nikar go, you guys, but last question. I mean, there are a lot of people who watch who want to pursue this industry, mm -hmm. who want to do what you do. Um, as a woman and as an Iranian-American actress, mm -hmm. what kind of advice or, or what tip would you share with them? Um, as they as they get into this business. Well, I think uh, I think I always enjoyed the work part of it. There's a lot of other aspects of this business, um, but the work, the the craft itself, is the most enjoyable part. I think always that you'll find when you when you work in it, and um, to really enjoy that work and not be afraid to put in the work because it really, if you're good and committed and devoted, you will work. I'm a firm believer that there's work for everyone. Mm -hmm. So if you put in the work, I think you'll see it. Great. Put in the work, you guys. <laughs> um, thank you for hanging out. Thank you for coming back. You're thank so you. sweet. Oh, yeah. Oh, really, really, yeah. And we thank took a photo already. Um, I'm going to have you sign my calendar before you go. This is a little um, okay. project that oh, I have I going here. Yes, and we're going to do something charitable at the end of the year here. So anywhere on the calendar is good, okay. as you can see. I don't even know who was here. Well, I <laughs> will month, sign so for you on the last day of the month. Yay. That's it. Yay, Nobody, yay. I, I, I closed the deal for January. Yay, yay. Thank you so much. <laughs> I love your voice, by the way. It's so deep and resonant. Thank you. It just, it's Thank sexy. you. Like Thank it. you guys so much. Thanks a lot. Uh, Thanks I hope for you visiting. watch your show. And I hope you love it. Like yes, watch, yeah. The, watch it. Yeah, watch <laughs> the trailer looks on great. Thursday nights on Fox. Check it out. Have okay. a good one. Bye -bye. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for coming back. Okay, soon. Okay, bye-bye. With more hair. Not fair. Her voice is something. Reminds me of Katie Seagal. She truly, she's like a supermodel. She's about 5'10". I was just going to ask how tall is she because she looks She's proper. Like proper supermodel. Very tall. I swear she's about 5'10". Can me like a model? 5'9". I, okay, I'm gonna... as close. Five nine five ten. Um, stunning. Wow. Yeah, that's okay. coming from Maria. Stunning. Hello, Maria. It's Harold. Harold, I thought that was you. <laughs> I know. Where? Yeah, I, yeah, I was with I was with Maria her first broadcast when we did the where first have, broadcast. Where have you been? Why have you? Yeah, why, you've why been missing, been? Harold. <laughs> Well, Why I've been I've been uh, working with the Navajo people. I, I I'm doing what you're doing now with the Navajos. I do two broadcasts a week. We do Navajo language lessons on Google Hangouts. Isn't that great? That's yeah. cool. That's wonderful. Wow. Do you speak Navajo? Yeah, I'm speaking. I'm learn. Well, I'm teaching the lessons, so I'm I'm a cold teacher, and so I'm kind of <laughs> learning it as a okay. as a. We have a and we have a Navajo. One second. We have a Navajo person in the school district, and he does the lessons, and I help him out. Right here. Um, what's up? Why did they walk by? See, Roxia. Hello, Roxia. Hello, Roxia. Hello, Roxia. Hello, Roxia. Get little outfit. <laughs> Get little outfit. Oh, oh, girl. Can we go together? No, together. What? Yeah, my yeah, outfit. Yeah, the three ladies. Get Lisa back too. The lighting, oh, right? Lighting. <laughs> no, stop it. <laughs> yeah. They're too they have to tag it. One, two, three. Close it. 
Are these Arashi, people watching us get an OTD? My butt. Oh stop my grabbing my butt. So annoying. <laughs> do a turn around, Roxy. Do a turn around, Roxy. Let's see the back. Oh, I actually. <laughs> no, I see the back. Oh, I like the I like the detail. I like the, I like the detail. I like how it changes oh, colors between detail. red and pink. The fold, the uh, yeah. I like the detail on the back. Oh shit! Duct tape. You put your dress on backwards. It could work technically, but then this gave it away. Okay. Guys, it's almost ten o'clock, so I think we have to go. But those are the lovely ladies. Yep. That I work with on a daily like, basis. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So that's why like, I'm like, be so hard sometimes. That's LA for you. I mean, it, it, honestly, it, to have a of your caliber, if, if, if there was any any business in Bradford, <laughs> I don't like that, honestly, the, the, the application uh, key would be. Thank amazing. God for um, some of the Q guys uh, here in the Hangout as well, mm -hmm. as, yeah. you know, we're, we're in desperate need of some. The, the handsome guy had to. Uh, okay, bye, guys. Over. Not yet. Bye. <laughs> Bye, YouTubers. <laughs> Bye. Yeah, we're good. Bye. Keep it classy. Bye. Bye. See ya. Hi, Roxia. Bye, YouTubers. Thanks for joining us today. That was fun. Thank you, Roxia. Um, and Julie. Um, that was fun with John O'Hurley and Nikar Zadigan. She was really nice. Super. Yeah, nice. She came back as well. That was so sweet. Are we still live? We're still live. We are still live. Oh, yeah. We are still live. Okay, bye. Bye, YouTubers. Bye, YouTubers.